Welcome back to Routine Rundown. I'm your host, Zoe Weiner, and I am really excited about today's episode because it's something a little bit different than what we typically do. We are talking to Calvin Qualitz, who is the founder of Scotch Porter, which is a men's grooming brand. And if you've been listening to the podcast, you know that we have historically focused on women's beauty. And this is really exciting to me because Calvin and the work he's doing with the brand is really expanding the definition of beauty and making us understand that self-care is not just for women, it's for everyone. So Calvin, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Um, So let's start. Tell me a little bit about yourself and the journey into founding this brand. Yeah, so taking a, a bit of a step back, I started the brand about eight years ago. Um, b- before starting the brand, um, you know, I grew up in my mom's beauty parlor and barbershop and spent a tremendous amount of time there as a kid. I uh, hated it as a kid because my brother and I would have to run errands and sweep the floor of the shop and no kid enjoyed that. But, you know, what I really appreciated and sort of looking back in hindsight was this ability that my mom Um, and some of the barbers and stylists had in terms of helping people feel better about themselves. And um, I I would see that every day that I was there, right? Folks would walk in one way and walk out another. And so um, really appreciated that. Went off to college, uh, did the thing that I was told that I was supposed to do, go to college, go get a good job, um, you know, buy a house, buy a car, start a family, all that stuff, right? And subscribe to some of that, um, which is going to college and getting a good job. Um, But all the while, while working at this daytime desk job in finance, felt very empty, uh, very unfulfilled, um, and struggled a bit, right? Um, Struggled a bit in terms of trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life, and um, made a decision uh, before I hit 30 that I would sort of figure it out, figure out what I was supposed to do by just taking a leap of faith in in starting, right? (laughs) Whatever that was. And so, um, one evening coming home from work, one long, miserable day, uh, <laughs> spotted a brownstone building, had this epiphany, remembered the time growing up in my mom's shop and opened up a barbershop. Um, shortly thereafter, noticed an issue. Many of the men visiting the shop, very dry, frizzy, damaged hair and beards, went home, became sort of a kitchen chemist, learned everything I could about natural ingredients, started to create products in the kitchen of my home and uh, built, built Scotch Porter from that little barbershop. Um, before launching a D2C uh, business online and had some success there before then branching off to retail um, at the top of the pandemic and having success there. Um, And I think what keeps me motivated, me and the team motivated and excited about what we do each and every day is that it has always been clear to us that we are not just in the business of selling hair, beard and skincare uh, products and body care products, but we're in the business of helping men feel the best, uh, live the best, uh, most fulfilled lives. And you can see that in some of the work that we do and, and share. And that sounds different than a lot of the men's brands I know that I grew up with seeing commercials for on TV. You know, I think there have always been men's grooming brands, but this feels really different. The messaging, the products, kind of the conversation that you've started with this brand. How How is Scotch Porter different than kind of the historical, what you and I would have grown up with um, offerings on the market for men? One, I'd say that the way that we think about the business, again, just isn't about, you know, the best looking here or beard. We, albeit we have really great products that, you know, have, uh, that perform incredibly well as evidence in the tens of thousands of five star reviews. But we think about men's grooming um, more on a holistic level. So not just like what you look like on the outside, but how you feel on the inside. Um, has has an impact on your life. And so we we focus on internal and external health and wellness rather than just what you look like on the outside. And I think that's a, that's a big difference. I love that. And I think that's something we've seen a lot in women's beauty too. And something that I know we've talked a lot about on Well and Good, particularly in the last few years, this idea that it used to be look good, feel good. And now it's kind of feel good, look good. And it sounds like that is kind of central, central to what you've built too. It's like the, the, the care piece of it comes first. Absolutely. Care, care is the optimal word. And I think, you know, self-care really has traditionally and honestly wrongly been thought of something that's just for women. You think of kind of the, the cliche, get in the bubble bath with a glass of wine. And those things have kind of a feminine connotation, which is, which is wrong. Um, why do you think it's important to shift that conversation? Why do you think self-care is important for men? It obviously is. And how is Scotch Porter working to do that? 
So first, let me say that I think self-care, what self-care means for one person can mean something completely different for another, right? Mm -hmm. And um, we are definitely pro uh, your version of self-care. So if that means taking a bubble bath and lighting a candle is your version of self-care, all for it, go do it, right? If your version is another way, then we accept that as well. I think it, I think it is about um, what is important to the individual, what one needs or what one defines as self-care and what one needs to feel better about themselves and move throughout the day. Um, so I think we focus on um, not prescribing what self-care looks like hmm. for, for any one person. I think it's, it's really about allowing individuals to express their individuality and, and being there with some gems or some doses or, or some, some, some conversation starters to at least begin the conversation. So as people um, explore um, what makes them feel good um, and what they should be doing to feel better, um, you know, we're right there to, to provide a little bit, some tips and, and, and conversation starters. What is your ideal form of self-care look like? Um, so my idea of self-care is, um, prayer, um, a bit of meditation and on, you know, those tough days or tough weeks, um, you know, jumping on a phone call with my mom or a loved one. Um, and I find that spending time with loved ones is, a, is really great in terms of self-care because whatever you're going through throughout the day whether it's, you know, scotch quarter, you know, um, any fires that you've had to put out, once you go and sit down with family and especially my mom, um, what's happening in the business isn't even a part of the conversation. It's like, how are you doing? Um, and it allows me the opportunity to forget about whatever was happening um, that day or that week. And so I find just being amongst people that, that truly love me and care about me is, is really my version of, of self-care. Do you think that the attitude among men using grooming as a form of self-care has shifted a little bit? I think, you know, I grew up in a time when, like, the word metrosexual was a part of the lexicon, which just, ugh, I can't, I, like, ugh. But I think, <laughs> do you think that the attitude towards that is changing where there's not one idea of masculinity and where, you know, taking care of it, you can still be a man, whatever that means to you, and take care of yourself from a grooming standpoint? <laughs> No, I, absolutely. I do believe that there is an evolving definition of masculinity. Um, and we are seeing men, um, and I don't know if this, if this was heightened by the pandemic, but men are more, um, men are now looking to explore just different products and different items that may have historically been considered feminine. Um, eye creams, um, anti-aging uh, creams, you know, acids, hyaluronic acids, and all kinds of, you know, different skincare items. Um, part of that, I think, is um, being stuck in the house, not, not mm -hmm. having access to maybe a barbershop. Um, I think part of it is also the fact that we're always on camera <laughs> now uh, more than ever. So, like, you literally get to see yourself, um, you know, on a camera, um, you know, uh, much more than we used to in the past. And so I think all of that has... Um, open men up to exploring, uh, you know, more routines and skincare and, and other routines. And we, and we are seeing that in our business. I love to hear that. And you had a campaign a few years back, the dare to care campaign, right. That really spoke to all of this and kind of the different, different forms of masculinity, different ways men can be men. Can you talk a little bit about that campaign? I just loved it. And I want our, I want our listeners to hear a little about it from your perspective. Yeah, I think it's, I think, you know, it's all about, we talk a lot about um, men having the ability and option to love up on themselves, to love up, love up on their family members, to love on their community, right? To really care and just daring men to care and express themselves without, um, you know, feeling shame and expressing, expressing themselves however they, they, they need to do that, right? And so, that campaign was, it was, really was about ex allowing folks to express themselves and be individuals and, and not really caring about what society has to say. And that can come in the form of traditional, traditional masculinity and or evolving masculinity. I love that. And I remember, you know, a few years ago, I remember seeing a statistic, I may butcher this statistic, I hope I don't, but that 
the large, the majority, at least more than half of men's grooming products were purchased by women, either for a partner or for a relative, a brother, son, husband, whatever it is. Do you think that's shifted? Are you seeing kind of more male consumers coming to you? And do you think that that's, you know, less, less gift buying and really men looking into curate these routines for themselves? Yeah, absolutely. If we look at our D2C business, about 70% of our customers that come to our D2C site are men purchasing products, usually for themselves, um, 30% um, women. Um, it does flip during key holidays, right? So yeah. um, Father's Day and other holidays. What we see in retail is about 60% of the customers that are walking down a Target or a Walmart and or other retail aisle. Um, for our products are men purchasing for themselves and about 40% women. So I'd say um, that o o over overwhelmingly men are definitely picking up items uh, on their own, um, their own grooming items is what we're seeing. And I'm glad you brought up Target and Walmart because that's something else I wanted to touch on is the fact that these products are accessible. You know, they feel really luxurious, they smell really luxurious, but they are at a drugstore accessible price point. Why is that something that was important to you? Um, and how have you managed to make it feel like luxury at a price point that everybody can can access? Yeah, listen, I think if we talk about helping people to, to feel better and live their best best lives, uh, that that shouldn't come at a, a price point, um, right? That that is uh, that doesn't allow everyone to access it. So um, it's it's always been it's always been a point for us, like how can we get this message out about self-care, um, self-love uh, to the masses? And, and truly the only way to do that is, is having a price point that is accessible. But we also understand that products need to perform um, and work really well. Um, and they need to smell good. You know, fragrance and scent is just uh, a huge part um you know of uh, of having a great product it, men look for you know uh items that smell good and so we do a lot of work in ensuring that our products um not only perform incredibly well that our price points are um drugstore price points as you as you stated um but also that our products are clean um and healthy um and non-toxic and although we don't necessarily uh, necessarily get the credit that we deserve for like being one of the few men's brands that have like clean products with like 1400 ingredients that, that are not in our products, um, we do it because uh, you know it, it's it's one of the it's one of the pinnacles that we stand on. We, if we talk about wanting to help you feel better, we can't include nasty toxic ingredients that can harm you. Yeah, it's so true. And you've been doing this for yeah. 10 years, almost 10 years? What year? You launched 2015? No, it's eight years. We, eight yeah, years. We, just okay. turned, we just turned eight, yeah. Wow, so a while. Um, yes. And I feel like in the last eight years, you know, there's been this whole conversation of we're on the precipice of a grooming boom. We're on the precipice of men's skincare. And now I feel like it, it's here. Like, I think if you look at the data, I think so much of the conversation that we're having right now, like, really – it's it's here. Um, and what do you think got us to this point? I know we've touched on it a little bit, but are there certain factors um, that have made this boom, the boom that we've been talking about for so long, finally finally get here? No, listen. One, I will say, I will say that it's an exciting, it, it's it's an incredibly exciting time, and the boom is absolutely here, and it is evident in the proliferation of <laughs> tens of men's brands in the competition. Uh, that Scotch Porter and other brands are seeing uh, in the space. Um, it, it truly is an exciting time. Um, it's been a long time, right, coming. I mean, I, I read things like 10 years ago where they were talking about the boomers. <laughs> <I mean, laughs> and it's and it's finally here. So one, I, I'd say that, it, you know, it, it, there was a buildup <laughs> over the last 10 years and it's finally here. But then I think it also goes back to, you know, that conversation that we had about like the pandemic and how that has shifted uh, grooming routines and, and the way that, you know, men are thinking about uh, self-care and, and how, you know, there were, there were these broad conversations around wellness and, and taking care of yourself. And, and I think all of that has had an impact, um, you know, in terms of the growth of men's grooming over the last, you know, few years. So I'm, I'm glad that the boom is finally here. Yeah. Well, and I, and I think one thing that makes Scotch Porter stand apart and has always since its launch is the inclusivity piece of it. I think that the products you offer 
are really for everyone. I mean, we've talked about kind of the different, however you identify as a man, but also different hair textures, different skin textures, different skin tones, all of that. Um, how do you, how do you formulate? I mean, also the scents I feel like are very different than the traditional, like, let's make every man smell like they just got back from chopping down wood, which is not, not my <laughs> ideal scent in a partner, but for some, um, how have you crafted a line that really feels inclusive? And, and we talked about the accessibility, but the inclusivity piece of it, I think is really important too. Yeah. I mean, since the, since the days of, you know, building the brand, you know, we, if I think about the barbershop that we had, you know, we had a plethora of customers, you know, all different ethnicities. So I think in those earlier days when building the product, it's just always been a part of our thought process and foundation. Um, and again, our goal is, is how do we spread uh, self-care wellness and, and really help men to feel the best and how do we get that to the masses and i think the only way that you can truly do that um is by being an inclusive brand that you know speaks to everyone um and we've always focused on and you'll see much more of this from the brand around allowing folks to express their individuality whatever that is and so while our while our current lineup um in terms of fragrances aren't you know uh, pine needles or anything like that. I mean, no, no, no shame against folks that love that. L listen, if that's what you love, fantastic. But I think we've always thought about, um, we've always thought about um, how we can be different, even, even in terms of like the fragrance profile. And so you'll see, um, or you'll smell when you pick up a Scotch Quarter product that the fragrance profiles are almost seem very unisex, but they are leaning a little bit more masculine um and that is that's that's always been very intentional yeah it's like there's it's it feels like there it used to be a one size fits all for what a men's product used to look like and within your line it's clear there's there's not there's many scents there's different things you can do to your routine yeah absolutely and this idea of speaking to everyone, I think, is really evident in the brand's social media. I feel like that you really speak to consumers in a way that, I mean, going back to, again, I feel like I keep bringing up, like, these historical men's brands, but it's different, and it's educational, and it really meets people where they're at in their routine. Tell me a little bit about that and how the education and the brand voice comes into it. Yeah, um, you know, I, I think that there is – there is a benefit to providing sort of counsel <laughs> to some men. And, and I think generally speaking, you know, um, men are, men are looking for some advice, right? Whether that is, um, grooming uh, on their grooming routine and sort of the best products or the best way to use a product, um, along with, uh, you know, advice on the best smoothie or, you know, financial education, um, you know, how we think about the brand and, and how we think about our customer is really how we can help them on more of a holistic level. And so, as you can see from our social profiles, we, we don't just talk about grooming, right? And we don't just give tips and advice on just grooming. That is definitely a part of our business. Um, but you, you can see that we talk about a whole host of things, uh, physical fitness, financial fitness, um, you know, health and wellness, grooming, uh, tips, uh, dating advice. Like we have a, a host of, of conversations around a bunch of things. And, and we found that it's because men have raised their hands and said, hey, um, we don't necessarily have many folks that we can talk to about this or get advice. Um, and I think we're seeing some, some changes or societal shifts um, where sort of the, the, the old guard uh, isn't necessarily, uh, you know, giving the, the younger guard the tips and advice uh, that we want, or the younger guard just isn't listening. <laughs> so we try to be, we try to be that, uh, we try to be that person that, you know, that, that good friend that gives great advice on a whole host of things that men uh, are missing. Almost like barbershop talk, but um but over yeah. social is the best way that I would explain it. Like you, in, back in the day, um, not so much now, but you'd walk into a barbershop, you talk to your barber, maybe some of the other guys and other individuals that are in the shop and you talk about everything. You wouldn't just talk about like haircuts, you talk about life in general. Um, and so that's what we're offering uh, online. 
I love that. And I think, you know, I'm obviously the beauty editor friend to many, many men in my life. And I think they've all come to me with questions that, you know, it's, I'm, I'm breaking out before my wedding. What do I do? I got a bad haircut. What do I do? Like, and many things beyond just, I mean, I, I get the beauty questions, but I know that they're asking all these questions <laughs> elsewhere because it feels like they're really, you know, there hasn't necessarily been a place to seek out this advice. And there's been a little bit of a stigma to, to ask it openly or yeah. request it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, I mean, we've, we've definitely seen that there's, it's, it's, it's almost like there's, there's this dichotomy there, there are, um, that we're seeing, there are men that are definitely rooting for traditional masculinity and, and will not have, or are not interested in certain conversations. And then there, there are, there there are men that are very interested in evolving masculinity and are open to having you know those conversations that might have been might have uh, been seen as uncomfortable by some and 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 i think we're seeing that we're not we're seeing that everywhere right whether it's like guys that are comfortable wearing mascara or guys that are comfortable with painting their fingernails right mm -hmm. um we are seeing like this this shift where traditional masculinity um is is definitely still uh, a thing that many men are are championing championing thing. but then there are also there's also this evolving masculinity and i just say be who you are as long you as as long as you aren't hurting anyone um you know um physically or emotionally be who be who you are and we obviously do not um we do not tolerate um hate or um you know, the extremes of any one side, I'd say. Yeah, it's like be who you are, but let everybody else be who they are too. And I exactly. Think yeah, I think that's amazing. Um, and I know you also, there's a lot of social impact work involved with the brand. And I know that you are serving men beyond who your customers are. Tell me a little bit about that and why that was something that you wanted to do and why why you chose the impact that you chose to go along with, with this brand mission. Yeah, um, it goes back to it goes back to our mission of helping men feel their best, live their best, most fulfilled lives. Right? Um, product conversation is one thing, but we also thought about how we could blend our dollars, right? And and how our dollars can have an impact. And we've identified, you know, some core pillars that greatly impact the customers that we served, uh, that we serve around recidivism, job, uh, job and education, um, entrepreneurship. And we've decided to donate almost 2% of our total sales um, to uh, initiatives and causes, mm -hmm. forward causes um, that have really great impact in this area. Um, we launched our program about 10 months ago, our social impact program. It's an always on program. It is, it is uh, just, as, just as we budget anything else, it is, it's included in our budget. So it's, you know, it's a part of the budget conversation and it's a metric that we measure um, on a weekly basis, we look at the number of lives that we've impacted. So to date, we've launched a program now about 11 months ago. Um, today, I think we're at like a little over 350,000 and we've impacted close to 65,000 lives. So it's something wow. that we're absolutely proud of. And we consistently look at ways that we can have greater impact um, and impact more lives. Wow. You know, it's, I, I just love hearing you talk about all of this because I think so much in the last few years, the definition of wellness has expanded. And that's something that we've worked really hard with at Well and Good. And, you know, to include all of these things that you're talking about, financial wellness, physical wellness, emotional, mental, all of those things, like feeling good about yourself. And it's just, it's, I've, I've never heard a men's brand or a grooming brand talk about these things kind of in that way. And it's the real, it's like wellness 2.0 for 20, 2020, post pandemic wellness, let's call it. And it's really, it's exciting. It is. It's very exciting. And you it's were doing it pre-pandemic. <laughs> yes, yes, we were doing this a long time ago. And listen, I, I think as an entrepreneur, as a founder, you know, I think we, um, I've always thought that you know, when you have the platform, you have the ability to help other people. You know, you, you should do it. Like I, I feel like I have an obligation as a business. We have we have an obligation to not just take, but but to give. And I mean that um, in every sense of the word. So proud of the work that we're doing. Amazing. And tell me a little bit about how you use the Scotch Porter products in your routine. What does your daily Scotch Porter routine look like? So um, I don't have a haircut, which is why I'm wearing this baseball cap right now. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
Uh, but my daily routine is our hair balm. I, I absolutely love our hair balm. I mix that in with our leave-in conditioner. I will usually use the leave-in conditioner um, and then apply the hair balm. And then I am literally obsessed with our body care products. Um, and so, um, you know, twice a day I'm using our body washes, um, especially our tobacco and musk. It's, it's my absolute favorite and it's a bestseller. Um, body wash has incredible ingredients like marula oil and shea butter and niacinamide and just a whole host of really luxurious, great healing ingredients. And um, it leaves the skin a feeling smooth uh, and not dry. And um, it comes at an incredibly affordable price point, $9.99, right? For, for our wash and, and, and our lotion, our body lotion is $7.99. So it's definitely affordable with some premium good for you ingredients. That's awesome. I think there's nothing that gets me more excited than when my boyfriend gets excited about a product. And when I told him I was interviewing you, he was very excited, I will tell you. Oh, um, but I feel like, yeah, like I think I will. <laughs> but I think, you know, having like that, those moments of self-care for nine ninety nine that are like luxurious textures, luxurious scents, and really just crafting a routine. It sounds like a good one. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Amazing. Oh, and my last question, what do you think is next in men's grooming? I think we've come really far in the last couple of years. What do you think's on the horizon for us? Is men is men's makeup coming for us? I would like to see a world where that's a thing. More of a Yeah. Thing. No, absolutely. Listen, I what has been a really big focus for us, you know, over the last few months is thinking about what's next and we have been really, really focused on this idea of individuality. Um, we talked about that somewhat on this call. Um, giving people the permission to express themselves as long as they aren't harming or hurting anyone in whatever way they want to express themselves. And so whether that is via traditional masculinity, um, or that is evolving masculinity where, you know, individuals are comfortable and, and will use makeup and nail polish or mascara or whatever it is, right? Um, and just really embracing that and allowing people to, allowing people to feel good about themselves is what is what we talk about, right? And so whatever version of that is, just really embracing it and giving folks the permission to not give a shit. I don't know if I can say that here, yeah, yeah. Um, but not to give a shit about what the world thinks, um, you know, thinks of their, their decisions or choices around what masculinity is. Um, um, I think it's, it's, it's time that we, that we grow up <laughs> and, and allow people um, the ability to, to, to love themselves and love others and, 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 and navigate life as best as they could. We're all, we're all in this trying to figure, figure it out. We all deserve to be loved and show up in the world as we are, who we are, and be loved for that. And so I think that is what we'll be focused on. And I am hopeful that other men's brands and, and the world will start to, to think about that a bit more and, and, and focus on that a bit more. That's such a beautiful way to put it. And Gen Z is coming for us. So my hopes are, my hopes are high yes. for all of those things. <laughs> Amazing. Yes. Well, Calvin, thank you so, so much for coming on. This was awesome. As I told you, as I told everyone, this was our first foray into talking about men's products. And now Thanks I know that I need, I need to stock my shower with Scotch Porter. So I'm excited. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for having me. It was a great. Thank you. Thank a pleasure. you.